Hi, this is Ken Stiles, the Pragmatic Professor, offering insights and advice based on my 35 years of college teaching. Most of my videos are aimed at college students, but this one and a few others are aimed at uh, young college professors just getting started in the field. Today we're going to talk about how to get yourself on the tenure track. So here's the thing. <laughs> It's not easy to get a tenure track job, never has been, probably never will be. But it's a lot easier to become an adjunct professor working part-time or to be a visiting professor working temporarily for a year or two. Understand that as enjoyable as these jobs may be, and perhaps you know as lucrative as they may be compared to waiting tables or something, uh, this is not the solution to your problem. This is not the way to get your career on track. Adjuncts and visitors by definition are being exploited and as somebody who is basically doing the exploiting I can be candid about this. Full professors, tenured faculty in general love it when we can get somebody else uh, to teach classes we don't want to teach. right? And so we'll look around for retirees or for uh, young people who haven't been able to land a tenure track job yet. And we'll frankly pretend that we're doing them a favor by letting them teach a class or two here or there for a few thousand dollars each. But at the same time, we're not making any kind of a commitment. We're not offering the kind of benefit package or the kind of, kind of career path that these people probably deserve. Uh, and so it's kind of the dark underbelly of academia. Uh, you want to get out of this as soon as you can. Okay, Think of it this way. If you're familiar with the economic term opportunity cost, there is a cost involved in being an adjunct and being a visitor in that as the longer you spend doing those things, the less time you're spending getting yourself on and through the tenure track process. So just think it through, okay? For one thing, at most universities, your teaching experience isn't as valuable as you might think. Once we know uh, as a department that you can teach, if you've had one or two classes uh, that you've taught all by yourself, that's good enough. You know, we'll look to see whether the course evaluations are reasonable but once you've met that sort of minimum standard, piling on top of that with eight or nine or ten other courses uh, won't really help you in any appreciable way. Okay, this is what will help you. Okay, good publications. This is the key. And you were probably told this in graduate school, you've probably been told this by many people, uh, but it is a fact, right? If you can get good publications out, that's going to get people's attention. Okay, and that's usually the standard that we use when we hire people. And I've been on dozens and dozens of hiring committees over the years, and it always comes back to that. So, this should be your focus. I would even go so far as to recommend that you take a job that is maybe beneath you as a night watchman or something else, but that gives you a lot of free time to work on getting stuff published. Okay, That will be a worthwhile investment. Now, how do you do that? Well, look for as many shortcuts as you can. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't create a brand new database. Don't launch into a new round of experiments. Look at what you've got. Right? You have a PhD. You've got a lot. That dissertation of yours should be a gold mine. Try to squeeze out anything you can. Probably not a book. Right? Books are risky. You can see what I had to say about book publishing in a different video. But articles, chapters, uh, just squeeze out what you can and get some of that material published. Okay. Go back to your advisor. I don't know what kind of graduate program you were in, but uh, an advisor is a resource and should be expected to help you at this stage in your career. Even for example, by co-authoring work with you. Uh, I've seen this happen a lot. It can be a big help. 
take one of the chapters from your dissertation and talk to your old advisor to see whether she's willing to co-author with you or see if you can piggyback on some of her projects. Uh, just get that stuff out uh, as quickly as you can and having the advisor on board will probably increase the odds of the material getting published. Okay. Also, talk to your peers, your friends from graduate school, your colleagues in your new department, uh, even if you're an adjunct or a visitor. Start knocking on doors, start uh, sending emails, uh, birthday wishes, and so forth, and see whether anybody is willing to help with some of your projects by providing their own input, uh, or if you can you know, glom on to one of their projects. It's much, much better to try to uh, be involved in something that is ongoing than to reinvent the wheel again. Okay. Make sure you're going to professional meetings, even though I'm well aware that this will be expensive. Okay, You'll probably have to pay for the membership fees and the registration fees out of your own pocket, not to mention the airfare and so forth. The good news is that at least right now, with the coronavirus, you might be able to save some money on travel and participate in a Zoom conference or something like that. But get your work out there. Send your papers off to the top people in the discipline. Just Try to find as many people as you can to comment on your work uh, and to help you steer your projects towards something that can be published as quickly as you can. Now, in another video, I talk about life balance. Uh, this is a stage in your life when your life will not be balanced. Okay, These are desperate times, and so it would be wise to have a family conference or a uh, serious conversation with uh, your loved ones and explain to them that this is one time in your life when it's going to be all about you for a while. Hopefully it won't last long and uh, more than likely the payoff will be tremendous. But again, be very careful about getting caught in a cycle of adjunct and visiting positions. Uh, you're better off walking away from those and just concentrating on getting your publications out as much as you can and get on the tenure track and then you'll get to experience a whole different level of stress. <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time. Anyway, this is Ken Stiles, the Pragmatic Professor, wishing you all the best. So thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful to you. Make sure to comment and like and share and watch for other videos. And of course, the views expressed are my own and not necessarily those of any institutions with which I've been affiliated over the years. Take care. Bye-bye.